rejoice and we shall be glad in it. We're going to begin our morning worship with altar prayer. Um, we thank God for a brand new day that he has made, another day that he has kept us, another day that he has sustained us, another day that he has strengthened us. For again, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We may have had issues outside with snow. We may not be able to get to where we need to get to the way we want to get there. But the Bible says, I'm reminded in the scripture that he says, wherever the tabernacle of the Lord was, that's where the Lord resided. And as they marched through the wilderness, as they marched through the desert, wherever the tabernacle was, wherever they set that tabernacle, is up. That's where the Lord showed himself. That's where the Lord um, allowed himself to abide with the children of Israel. And I believe he's a God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so we'll have our altar prayer, and then immediately following our altar prayer, we'll have our call to worship, our invocation, and our scripture. I will have Crystal McCowan prepare herself to get a scripture and to read our statement of faith, and we'll go in that order. Father, thank you for this day. We give your name glory and we give your name honor and we give your name the praise. For this is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it. We thank you, O God, for all of your many blessings, all of your many manifold blessings, all of your goodness, all of your mercy, all of your grace for this day. Thank you, O God, for allowing us to wake up this morning in our right minds. Thank you, O God, that we had a mind to bless you, a mind to come together to serve you, God, a mind to come together and to lift up your holy name, O God. But there is no one else that's like you. We bless your name today, God. We give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, oh God, for you have been so good to us. And so here we are, oh God, as we do every Sunday morning, God, we come before the altar and we present our bodies as living sacrifices, Lord. If there's anything in us that's unlike you, we plead your blood. Let your blood cover right now. Let your blood renew right now. Let your blood wash in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. We want you to have free course and free reign in the midst of our service today. So come to more and have your way, God. If there's anything in us that's unlike you, oh God, we plead the blood. Let your blood cover, oh God. Let your blood purge and let your blood renew, oh God. We don't want anything to separate us from your love today, oh God. So we lay aside sin, God, today. We lay aside weights, oh God. We lay aside everything that may easily beset us, oh God, because we're endeavoring in our minds, oh God. We have a mission in our hearts, oh God, to bless you, oh God, to push everything that's unlike you, oh God, because we're going to get to you, oh God, today, God. Nothing shall separate me from your love today, oh God. Neither death, oh God, of hatred, oh God, sin, oh God, anything, oh God, that the world may try to throw before me will be able to separate me from your love today. And so, God, with all of our heart and with all of our mind and with all of our souls, we shall bless your name today. We shall give your name glory, oh God, because when praises don't go up, God, blessings come down, oh God, when we're able to open up our mouths, oh God, and push past, oh God, the circumstances of life, oh God, when we're able to lay down those things, oh God, and cast all of our cares upon you, oh God, when we give you our all, oh God, you bring peace in our hearts and, and peace in our minds, oh God, and peace in our souls today, so Holy Spirit, have your way, creating us a clean heart, Lord, have your way, have rain in this service today, have your way, God, in the mighty name of Jesus and fall afresh on our souls because we need you the more today. So have your way in us, oh God. Receive our worship today. Be pleased, oh God. We could have easily taken the day off. But God, you said men ought to always pray. We ought to always seek your face. We ought to always bring ourselves before you, oh God. Whether we're able to assemble ourselves in the temple, oh God, or where we're able to set up a tabernacle, a tent for you to come and dwell in, oh God. So bless us and honor our sacrifice on this day. Honor our fasting and honor our praying. God, honor all that we're doing for your glory and for your honor. Be pleased with us so that as we continue in the midst of this service today, oh God, let it be a, a sweet sound before you, oh God, a sweet, oh God, sound in your ears, oh God, a, a sweet fragrance in thy nostrils, oh God, be pleased with us and let your glory fill the room even now and have your way, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus we pray, amen and amen.
say yes. Yes to your will, God. Yes to your way, God. It's a song, oh God, our founder, Bishop Mason, sang, oh God, to submit to your will and to your way, God. It's not just a song of praise, but it's our heart's sincere desire, oh God. It's to say yes to your will, God, and, and yes to your way, God. Yes, we will obey, God. Yes, we will submit to your will, oh God. So, God, as we say yes to you, oh God, we say come to more and have your way in the midst of our service today. God, inhabit the praises of your people, God. Let your glory fill the room, oh God. Let your anointing fill the room, oh God. Let your power, oh God, fill the room, oh God. And come to more and have your way, oh God. In the midst of our praise, oh God, have your way, oh God. In the midst of our worship, God, have your way, oh God. We bless your name, oh God, and we give you all the glory, oh God. But I feel you in the room even now, oh God. As we avail ourselves to your will and to your way, God, have the, your way in the midst of our service. Water our souls, oh God, like a latter day rain, God. Water our souls today, oh God, like the former rains, oh God. Let your spirit, oh God, let the Holy Spirit have his way in the midst of us today. Save today amongst us, oh God. Deliver today amongst us, oh God. Set the captives free amongst us today. Heal and deliver, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. I know you can, oh God, and I know that you will, oh God. God, God, your mercies are new every single morning, God, because great is thy faithfulness, oh God. You're faithful to us, oh God. We were not even faithful to ourselves, oh God. You looked beyond our faults and you saw that we were in desperate need of your touch and desperate need of salvation. So God, we want to thank you, oh God, for all that you have done thus far. Thank you for the time of studying, oh God, in Sunday school, oh God, as we all are to, were told to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand in the evil day, having done all to stand. God, we're living in perilous times today. But you have called your people, oh God, to stand, oh God. You have given us everything we need, oh God, to stand, oh God. You have equipped us with everything we need to stand, oh God. So God, help us and give us to stand today. And so God, as we continue in the midst of this service, be in everything that we say and be in everything that we do. Let it be done for your glory and for your honor in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Let your glory, oh God, saturate the room even now, oh God. Fall afresh on every heart, God. Fall afresh on every soul, God. Fall afresh on every tongue, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. And have your way, God. We want you to move by your power, oh God. Move by your might, oh God. And move by your strength. So that even those that are here, oh God, they may feel your anointing, oh God. Feel the presence of the Lord. Those that are, uh, are binding, or that are joining us online, oh God, that they may feel the presence of the Lord, oh God, as it exudes, oh God, through the camera right now, oh God. And let your glory, oh God, let your anointing, oh God, let your power, oh God, rest on your people. For oh God, we are nothing without you. God, you are the one who made us. God, without you, we can't live. We can't move. We can't breathe. Oh God, we can't have our very being. So God, here we are, God, standing in the need of prayer. God, standing in the need of strength. Oh God, standing in the need of renewal. God, standing in the need of just another touch. God, old things are passed away. God, your old blessings are passed away. Oh God, those things that are past, we can't go back and connect to. Oh God, but each and every day, oh God, we're afforded brand new mercies. God, brand new favor, oh God, brand new love, oh God, brand new peace and joy, oh God, that you will pour out upon us, oh God, uh, bountifully, oh God, overwhelmingly, oh God, you will shower down your blessings upon your people. So here we are today, on this 22nd day of February, God, in 2015, here we are today, ready for you to move on us and move on your in your behalf, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And so bless us, keep us, and strengthen us, be pleased with this service. And we'll be careful to give thy name all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
but stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of darkness of this world, of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Amen. Amen. In our statement of faith, we believe the Bible to be inspired and the only found with the word of God. We believe that there is one God, eternally existent in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We believe in the blessings of hope, which is a rapture of the church of God, which is, which is in Christ at his return. We believe that the only means of being cleansed from sin is through repentance and faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We believe that the regeneration by the Holy Ghost is, abs is absolutely essential for Christmas salvation. We, we believe, believe that the redemptive work on the cross, on the cross provides healing for the human body and answers to believing in prayer. We believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, according to Acts 2 and 4, is given to believers to ask for it. We, we believe, believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, by whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live a holy and separated life in this present world. Amen. In our mission, our mission is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to equip believers to live a holy and separated life and to grow in love through discipleship. Amen. Amen. It is time for praise and worship. Amen. We ask that everyone just get their minds in tune and in the will of God. Amen. And as we come in and give offering of praise unto the Lord, anything that is having your, you know, got your mind all combobulated this morning, we ask that you free it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 How great is our God. There is no name that is greater than the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our God. There is no God like our God. There is no God mightier than our God. Amen. He is the true and only living God. He's wonderful and he's mighty. Hallelujah. God, we bless you and we praise you on this day. We magnify you, God, because there is none like you. You are a great God. And you are a mighty God. And you are awesome, God. And you're worthy of all the glory, God. You're worthy of all the praise, Jesus. And we bless your name, Jesus.
historic first jurisdiction for our annual Black History Celebration Program at New Community Temple Church of God in Christ in Portsmouth, Virginia at 12 p.m. Join us every Wednesday for our early morning prayer, coffee break with Praise Center, our Bible study during our wow, our wonderful, outstanding Word Wednesday. Sorry. Every Wednesday at 5.30 a.m., we will have morning prayers to start our day. If you would like to join us, join us in the prayer, you can go to our website and log in and find the login number and information. We hope you can join us. At 10 a.m., Lady McCowan will be holding her very own coffee break for the ladies only, sorry men. We encourage you to come out and join Lady McCowan in a more intimate setting where you can commune with her and get an empowering word as you sip on your tea or coffee. At 7.30 p.m. on Wednesdays, Praise Center will be having our praise, prayer, and study where we are discussing a series on faith. We hope that you can come out and join us. Please continue to pray for those in our prayer list. Um, and we encourage everyone to come out every Sunday morning for Bible, um, Bible study, for Sunday school, sorry, at 9.30 a.m. Whether you know the Bible from cover to cover or you only know one scripture, everyone should be in attendance in Sunday school. Amen. Amen. Tuesdays and Fridays are our fast days where we will be fasting until 3 o'clock p.m. And God bless you and please govern yourselves accordingly. to take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you that have joined us this morning, joined the Praise Center for our worship on this morning. Um, due to the elements, we are in a different location this morning, but like the pastor said this morning, wherever we consider the temple is, that's where God will reside at this morning. Okay, amen? amen? And he is in the midst this morning with us. So we do welcome each and every one of you, whether you're here with us in um, the sanctuary this morning or you are joining us via YouTube um, or you stream, excuse me, you stream um, this morning. We want to say welcome, and we don't take it lightly that you joined us this morning. Um, we hope that this week coming be your best week ever, just because you stopped by Praise Center yes, yes. on this morning. Yes. And we ask God to richly bless you and prosper you this week because you joined us this morning. Amen. Amen. We are getting ready to be, um, hear a word from the Lord on this morning from our pastor, um, the pastor Eugene McCowan Jr. And we are looking for a mighty word on this morning. We have been um, studying um, faith. We have been studying um, seasons in our lives. We have been really studying the word um, here um, in the past weeks. And everything has all been intertwining. All the messages have been really coinciding where we have been able to grow and been able to share with others about our faith, about how to transition um, through the seasons that they're going through. And it's just been a wonderful, wonderful um, teaching of how to walk in authority. Amen. And we are still learning how to walk this year in authority, the God-given authority, the authority that God has given each and every believer um, to maintain in this world today. And we are looking for an even greater word from the Lord on today to help us throughout this week coming. Um, I ask that you do sit attentively and listen to the message that will be coming forth. Amen. Amen. We do ask, even in this sanctuary, that you do stand when um, the pastor comes and reverence, give him reverence um, and, and that he is due as he comes forth and brings the word on this morning. Amen. 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 I love you, Lord.
your name on high. Hallelujah, God. We give you the glory, oh God, that you're so worthy of today. We exalt you, oh God. We lift up our hands and we magnify you and glorify you and submit to your will and to your way on this day. We exalt you, oh God, today. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but thy word will stand forever, God. We exalt you, oh God, today, oh God. You have been better to us than we have been to ourselves. We exalt you, oh Lord, today, oh God. You have been so good to us, oh God. And you're so worthy of the praise and worthy of the honor and worthy to be lifted up today. We bless your name, God, and we thank you for an opportunity to stand before these here, your people, God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, let them be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer, O oh God. Take me out of self, O oh God, and let your Holy Spirit have his way in me, O oh God. That the words, O oh God, may fall on good ground in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. That we may leave here, O oh God, empowered and strengthened, O oh God, and encouraged to run on, O oh God, and to press on, O oh God. And to continue to move on for you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. And so bless us now, oh God. Let your glory, oh God, continue to abide with us, oh God. Even in the name of Jesus, oh God. Even now, oh God, continue to strengthen us, oh God. Continue to bless us, oh God. Continue to fall afresh on us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, that you may be pleased with us. And that you may be adored. And so we bless your name, God. And we thank you for another chance and another opportunity to say yes to your will and yes to your way. And so again, have your way, God, and be in the midst of this word, oh God. Let it cut, oh God, to and fro, oh God, because your word is sharper than a two-edged sword, oh God. And so God, cut out everything that's unlike you, oh God, and let the word encourage us, oh God, to continue to run on and press on for you. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray this day. Thank God, amen and amen. Amen. Before you take your seats, if you can, please quickly turn with me uh, to two scriptures this morning that I have. Uh, Joshua chapter 24. Uh, we're going to read verse 15. That's the only one we're going to read. And then if you can um, turn in your Bibles to Matthew 6 and 24, just keep your fingers there um, as we'll go back to that one. First, we will read um, Joshua 24 and 15. That's my base scripture. So we'll just stick with that one. And we can get to Matthew 6 and 24 later. Why don't, why don't we all read together Joshua chapter 24. And we're going to begin, and we're only going to read verse 15. Amen? Do we all have it? Yes. Not yet? Joshua 24, verse 15. Very well-known or familiar scripture um, um, written by Joshua um, and was considered to be one of the last words that he spoke to the children of Israel to encourage them to live a life that was right in his eyes and continue to hold on to them. And let us read together. It looks like we all have it now. Joshua chapter 24, reading verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. You may take your seat. And Matthew 6 and 24 says, No man can serve two masters, for he either will hate the one and love the other, or else he would hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And so we can thank God um, for the reading and the hearing of the readers and the hearers of his word. Uh, so I want to give honor to my wife. I thank God for my wife and her encouragement. Uh, Lady McCown, what an awesome woman of God that God has bestowed upon me that has blessed me with. And I can surely say today that he that finds a good a wife finds a good thing. And I have found a good thing. I found a great thing. And so I thank God for my wife who stands by my side and encourages me. It's awesome that as we were out yesterday in the midst of the storm, um, God uh, showed us both. We were, we were with one accord and with one mind. I, I can tell you as you grow uh, more and more uh, in line or along with your spouse, uh, your, your thoughts become one. 
And as we were driving, we both were sitting there thinking of how we were going to have service today. It wasn't that we were going to cancel service. We knew that the location, our, 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 our temporary place over at Sony Penn Elementary was going to be shut down. And instead of saying, okay, it'd be a good day to sleep, we both were thinking, okay, well, how are we going to make this work uh, to be able to... Uh, I still have a service today. So I thank God for an awesome woman of God who is a praying, praying prayer warrior and an awesome woman of God uh, that is doing what God has called for her to do. And this is her moment and this is her time to continue to do great things. So I thank God for an awesome wife. And so uh, as we go into the word today, I won't be before you long. Um, I didn't um, suck on my uh, my ginger early enough like I should have, huh? Um, I, and I thank God for the, the blessings of uh, the family and the church and those that are here with us today. We had to make an adjustment. You know, usually what we do is we, we have a, a, a ritual that we do every morning that we pack up things and we got to move things into the car. And, and so we found ourselves out of sorts this morning because we did not move and do the normal things that we did. But I still say that today, that this is the day that the Lord has made. And every day that God blesses us to be in the land of the living is a day that we can bless him, a day that we can magnify him. A a day that we can glorify him and give him praise. It doesn't matter where we're at. We can be on the metro and we can sing and magnify the God of our salvation. We can be in the cubes at our job and we still can lift up the name of Jesus and actually shout it everywhere we go. They may think something is going on and they may come over, but we have a right to praise and magnify the God of our salvation wherever we see fit to do it. Because the world would do what they want to do. They'll shout and do all types of stuff to celebrate the things that's important to them. And so we as believers have to do the same. That where we are, we should be prepared and ready to give God the glory and the honor that he's so willing and, and righteously deserving of. And so here I am in the message today. Um, on a daily basis, we as individuals make thousands upon thousands of decisions or choices every single day. Uh, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, we make decisions both that are major and decisions that are minor uh, that can range from something as simple as what we should eat or what we should wear. Uh, the decisions can be based on uh, what should I, uh, uh, which way should I drive to work today? Should I uh, take the metro or should I slug into work or or uh, or, uh, or should I get on the metro and, and ride in today? Our decisions are, uh, the choices that we make are so vast. Um, our choices, our, our decisions can exude our swag, what we want to do, how we wear, or it can exude um, our uh, outlook for the day. While other decisions are simply uh, as simple as, should I turn left here or should I turn right here? Some choices that we make in our day-to-day -day lives bring immediate results. Um, and some, uh, they simply just need to marinate a little, some of our decisions. Um, if I make a left-hand turn, uh, if I make a right-hand turn uh, on a stop sign that says no right-hand turn on red, um, an immediate result could be that I can immediately get a ticket because a police officer can be there. Or something, a decision that we do, we can it can marinate, meaning that I, I, I want to put some money up in here so that I can go on vacation uh, a little bit later on in the day. I said our choices are, are, are vast and different. And so no matter how big or how small the choices that we make um, on a daily basis, they play a distinctive role in our day-to-day -day lives and walks as Christians. And so for a few moments, I would like to speak from the topic today. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. The saints of old used to sing a song um, um, during praise and and, and, te and testimony service, praise and testimony service, or testimony service. And it, it's amazing how the church of God in Christ is, is bred is that, you know, a person will sing a song um, and they'll look for a response out of the crowd. And so one of the mothers would begin to sing, whose side are you leaning on? And the crowd would respond um, uh, actively, leaning on the Lord's side. And then she'll ask, just in case somebody missed it the first time she called out and asked, she'll say, whose side are you leaning on? And the crowd would say, leaning on the Lord's side. And then just in case somebody's not paying attention, she'll change it up just a little bit because she just don't want you to get comfortable, but she wants you to think about what she's talking about. And she'll say, whose side are you praying on? And they will say, I'm praying on the Lord's side. And then she say, whose side are you praying on? Praying on the Lord's side. Now, it's amazing that this song that is ringing up in my song is a song that I find myself often singing throughout the day. 
it's, it's not a song that I hear quite frequently. Um, it's not a song that I hear on the radio, but it's a song that as I go through my day um, and as I strive to be a man of God that God has called me to be in this last and evil day, I find that I'm, I find myself constantly in a battle, in a war, in my flesh uh, uh, to help me or to try to prevent me from doing the things that God has called for me to do. And so what the song does is it helps me to remind me that my mission every single day is to continue to pray towards the mark for the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. The song itself is a simple song. Whose side are you leaning on? It reminds me that no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. And not only will it not prosper, that every tongue that rise up against me in judgment I can condemn. The song helps me, it reminds me of who's on my side and whose side I'm leaning on. I don't have to worry about the world that's against me because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And so my decisions, my choices should be based on expect, I mean, expected results because the God that we serve it's not a God that's different yesterday, a God that's different today, or a God that's different forevermore, but he is the same, and he has always been the same. And so as we learned in Sunday school today, that we have a weapon that's in the word of God. And the instructor this morning came out with a, 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 a key point that I think that we should take note of. And she said, Lady McCallum said, that the word of God is the only thing that can bless us physically and spiritually. All the other things that we do to equip our bodies uh, for warfare, they only work on certain areas. But the word of God, the sword of the spirit, is something that can help shape us physically and to shape us spiritually. And so our decisions that we make, uh, uh, it, 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 it tells us that we need to make sure that we make decisions that are good and decisions that are right. Um, the word tells us that he will never leave us. The word says he will never forsake us. So the God that we serve, that we hear about in the Bible or that we read about in the Bible is the same every single time that he comes. Every time he comes, he shows up and he shows out. No matter what it is, he may not come when we want him, but God knows that he always come right on time. And so I have another, but ye are a chosen generation. Let me get back from that. It said, but many of our decisions are based on the premise that we're in this thing on our own instead of having a God that's on our side. Or actually what we do is we forget that we actually belong to someone and we think that we're out here all on our own. And anytime we have to make a decision based on our own thought and on our own mind and in our own might, it's going to be a decision that's insufficient to be able to handle the circumstance or the situation that's coming to us. And so I'm reminded by the word of God that says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That means that no longer do I belong just to myself, but I belong to someone. We don't have the choice to be able to take the safe route. We don't have, we don't have the authority to make that decision to take the, the safe route or what our eyes are trying to tell us is the safe route. But we belong to somebody. We can't just be okay with following after the status quo. We are chosen. And if you don't know it today, I'm here to remind you, you are chosen. You just wasn't selected by happenstance. You just, just didn't fall off the bus and somebody decided to pick you up, but you were picked for this present moment in this present time. I often think that if I was born back in my father-in-law's time, that I may not have been able to make it. And it's probably true. I would not have been able to make it during that time. That's why God didn't allow me to be born during that time. But those that were born during that time, they were born there because of a reason and God had something that he had in them that was going to be able to be a blessing to those people at that time and my time is now or else I would not be here right now and so God blesses us and so we have to remember that we are chosen when we make decisions that we um the choices and the decisions that we make we have to remember that we're chosen we have to remember that we are a peculiar people that we're unique that we're not common people and oftentimes what we do as believers we walk around like we're just like everybody else but the bible tells us that we are different we are a peculiar people that means that we are not the same as everybody else so our decisions that we make our actions that we follow the things that we do cannot be the same decisions
decisions that the world chooses to make because we are unique. We are different. We are king's kids. That means I belong to a royal priesthood. That means I'm not common. And if y'all think of the kings and the monarchs that they have in England, Queen Elizabeth and, and their sons, Prince Charles and, and those kids, that those kids, those people are people that are held within high esteem. They're held, they're held up in high regards. People lifted up, whether they should be lifted up or not, but they're held in high regards. We as children of God, we should walk in authority. We should walk in boldness. We should be held in high regards and high esteem because we're not just like everybody else. We're different. We're unique. We're set apart for God's glory and we are vessels where the Holy Ghost chooses to dwell in. That makes us a little bit more, not just a little bit, but a lot more greater than those without and those that don't know him as their personal Lord and Savior. We have something great inside of us and that should make us stand out in the world and make us choose different decisions that we make. Yes. If I have no hope, then the decisions that I make won't help lead me to hope because I don't know who hope is. I don't know who holds my future. But if I know who holds my future and I know who keeps me and I know who sustains me, I know who makes ways out of nowhere and I know who works on my behalf, then the decisions that I make should be based on the one who is able to keep me from falling, the one who's able to present me faultless before him, the one who's able to keep me when all others around me are failing. My decisions should be based on who God is yes. and not the God that I don't know. And so we are a holy nation set aside for God's glory and we have been set aside for a purpose. Not that we can do the thing or walk in this life on our own, but we have to do, we have to stop doing things that only please us. We don't belong to ourselves, so uh, no longer can we do things that just please us. Uh, no longer should we be doing things that run over people. No, no longer should we find ourselves storing up wealth. Is I mean, wealth here on earth, knowing that those things are temporal. But we have been created for a purpose, or set aside for a purpose, so that we can show the world that God is good. That we should be able to show the goodness of Jesus and all that He has done for us. It is He who has brought us out of darkness. It's Him who has brought us out of um, into a marvelous light. It's Him that has plucked us up, up out of the muck and the miry. It's the one, he's the one who saved us from sin and from shame. He, he's the one that picked us up and turned us around and, and placed us our feet on solid ground. He's the one who has done it for us and it was not us ourselves. So, so our decisions and our choices that we make should be consistent with the one uh, with who he is mm -hmm. and how he has been mm -hmm. and what he is doing in our lives. Mm -hmm. It would seem that the choices that are in our life are simple. Yeah. But oftentimes, our, our, our choices and decisions, they're not very simple. Yeah. Saints of the Most High of God, that we should understand that there's a war going on in our flesh, and, and that battle causes us to doubt sometimes the promises and, and the things that God has in store for us. And so that war is, is going on every second, every second that we have to make a decision, and we make a decision every second. When I rise up in the morning, I make a decision on whether I'm going to sit in bed a little bit longer or whether I'm not going to sit in bed any longer. When I rise in the morning, I look at the clock. Am I going to just turn a alarm on or am I going to snooze for just a little bit? Am I going to go to work a little bit later? Every second, every minute, every hour, there's a decision that we must make. And if we don't make the right decision, our choices can lead to other failure and definite destruction. Yes. Destruction. If I wear this, um, how will I be perceived and how will it affect the person next to me? If I go here or if I go there, will it lead me to a place of success or will it trap me in a pit of failure if I let these words come out my mouth will it, will it, will it burn a hole uh, through the ears of those that hear it, or will it speak life will it bring life will it change the situation will it bring peace into a desperate situation I really don't have time to, to delve into the war because the war is a, a, is, is a good it's a, it's, it's a good piece. It's a message on its own. So, But there's a war that's going on in our person. And if we don't make the right decisions, the winner of the war would be the one that does not need to win the war. We learned earlier in Sunday school that we have an enemy that's here to kill us. He's here to yeah. steal, kill, and to destroy us. And he'll do everything he can to be able to change the decisions that we make. And so what we must do is understand that we must walk in authority and walk in the anointing that God has given us. He told Eve, the, the old serpent, he, he was able to change the mind of Eve, for Eve knew exactly what the Lord told her not to do. She understood the word exactly, because when he asked her, what is it that the Lord God told you to do? And she said, 
Precisely, he told us not to eat, that we can eat of everything in the garden except from those things that are from the the, the, the tree, uh, or the, the fruit from the tree. Uh, 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 what am I looking for? Life and death. All right. Thank you. Uh, and so he told her specifically, she was able to regurgitate that and give him exactly what the word, what God has said. And then he told her, he said, well, surely God didn't say that you would die if you eat from that tree. And then she began to think, well, maybe God didn't do it. But we can't do that in our choices. Our choices should be sustained. They should understand that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And what he says in his word is exactly what he means. There's no misunderstanding what God's word says. And so we have to make sure that our choices are there, that we make will help us live the life that God has called for us to live and for us to do things that will be a blessing to others. And so I have here that the choice is yours. But not only do your choices have a defining effect on our lives, our individual lives, but our decisions that we make. They have consequences or effects on those that are around us. The decisions that we make, they, they affect our family. The decisions that we make are the choices that we choose to do. They affect our friends. They, they affect our loved ones. They, they affect our co-workers. They, they affect our classmates. The, our decisions, our choices, they affect our churches. They affect our ministries and they affect the believers at large. The decisions that I do as a pastor has a defining effect on Praise Center Church of God in Christ. If I decide to go outside and go get a drink at the liquor store, that has a profound effect on Praise Center Church of God in Christ. If I go find myself hanging out uh, with some uh, some teenagers, some 19 and 20 year olds, and I don't come home early, that has a profound effect on my wife and it has a profound effect on my children. The decision we make is not just affecting us, but they affect those around us and that those that are love us. And so what we have to do, I have here, is that we, what we need to do is we need to protect our brand. We have a brand. As believers, we have a brand, and our brand is holiness. That's our brand. That's what we try to exude. That's what we want to put forth, that everything that we do should be able to exhibit our brand. And it's amazing what the world do is that the world tries to tear down our brand, uh, but they make sure they defend their brand to a T. They don't let anybody tear their brand. They, they brands, they, they brands have a name, and so they make sure that everything they do, everywhere they go, their brand is put forth. And so what we got to do is we got to do what we're supposed to do. We should be able to put our brand forth and we should not compromise our brand for anything. If holiness is our brand, that's how we should do. Our walk should be in holiness. Our, our discussions and our talk should be in holiness. Our actions should exude holiness. We should exude the brand that we are talking about is ours. That should be our choice. That should be our decision. And we shouldn't compromise for anything. And so what Joshua said to the people... We're compromising our brand. Yeah. We're making the wrong decisions. And so he got a little frustrated. And so what happens sometimes is that we begin, to, God gets frustrated at us. He gets frustrated when he keeps saying, well, look what I've done for you. Look look where I brought you from. And look at the things that I've done. I brought you from a mighty long way. It, it, haven't I been the same? Haven't I always done it for you? And so what Joshua decided to say to the people of Israel at that time, he said, and if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, it's time for you to make a choice. And so what I'm here today is I'm telling you, it's time for you to make a choice. You have to choose whether you're going to follow after God. You got to choose whoever you're going to serve. And so when you have to, when you think about the decision, and so what happens is people, we don't oftentimes take time to think about the decision and the choices that we want yes. to make. And so we, we make decisions and choices by happenstance. We go by the wind or the doctrine that we seem to do. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. The tree of knowledge of good and evil, right. not life and death. <laughs> And so we have to make sure that we, 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 we know who we serving. And so we have to make sure that when we make the decisions, we got to know who we serve. And so when we decide on the choices and decisions we make, we can't just go by every wind and doctrine. Because if we go by every wind and doctrine, that wind and doctrine can change. But Jesus is the same yesterday. He's been the same today. And he's going to be the same forevermore. And so uh, Joshua had to tell them, well, you know, what's going on with you? You don't remember where God had has brought us from that God when I became the, the, the king or when God chose me to lead the children of Israel we just had left Moses you don't remember how much despair our life was in you don't remember us running around the, the mountain uh, Mount Sinai over 40 years just wandering in the wilderness you don't remember where God has brought us from and so he had to remind them that you either can choose God or you can choose the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell that means we can't 
compromise with the world. We can't allow the world to come into our world and begin to change our world. But we have to remain steadfast. We have to remain unmovable. We have to remain abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our work is not in vain. Oh God, in the Lord, we must hold on to God and make the right changes that God has, choices that God has called for us to make. Yes. We can't compromise. And oftentimes when the Lord gave me this is because it appears that we compromise. We allow anything to, to separate us from the love of God. It, oh, Romans 8 is all in here and I can't go into it, but he says nothing will separate me. Yeah. That means he made a conscious decision. He made a conscious decision that he wasn't going to allow. It wasn't that things can affect him. It wasn't that those things hindered him. It wasn't that those things had him bound, but it was a choice that he can choose to make. Paul said, I'm not going to let anything separate me from the love of God. Nothing, nothing in my life, nothing will I allow to separate me. I'm trying to turn it because I want to get them all. He said, nothing will, will separate me from the love of God. He said, will death separate me? And he said, no. And all these things, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loves us. And he said, I am persuaded. That means he had his mind made up that nothing was going to change his direction. That it, it was for God he lived and for God he was going to die. And so he said, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor, nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor, nor height or death nor any other creature will be able to separate me from the love of God that I'm going to have to in my mind today that I'm not going to allow anything to stop me from, from getting to God. I'm not going to allow anything to separate me from the love of God. I'm not going to allow anything to hinder me from doing God's will and allowing him to allow his will to be done in my life. Nothing shall separate me. I am persuaded that my children won't separate me. I'm, I'm persuaded that my job won't separate me. I'm persuaded that not even my wife, though she distracts me sometimes, will be able to separate me from the love of God. That's a conscious decision that I have to make. And it's a conscious focus that I have to make. I have to make it my focus. And I have to make it my mission. I'm not saying that this walk will be easy. Because I'm reminded in the word he says, In this life ye shall have tribulation. But he said, Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Yeah. That's what the word of God says. And so what we have to do is our decisions and our choices have to be based upon the word of God. We can't go by how we feel. We can't go by what we think. But Paul declared that I am persuaded. And Joshua was persuaded. He looked back over his life and he said, well, God, when I came into this position of being um, the king or the ruler of the Jews, I, I, I didn't know what I was doing. But you told me to fear not and be strong. And as I continued to fear not and be strong, I was able to walk in authority. That means people were following. People were looking at me. And I'm here to tell you believers today that people are following you and people are looking at you and they want to know. They want to have a solution for hope and, and, if, and if we're not the message of hope then we got to have a generation of people that will be dying and, and of people that will be lost yes. and so I remind me here to tell you today the choice is yours and whether you what choice are you going to choose whose side are you leaning on today are you leaning on the Lord's side or are you leaning on the side of the gods of the Amorites are, are you leaning on the sides of those are homosexuals are, are you leaning on the side of those who believe drugs are okay are you leaning on the side of those who want to still kill and Short. Whose side are you leaning on today? Are you leaning on the Lord's side? Are you leaning on the one who never changes? He said, I never change. I'm, I'm the God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. I don't change. I, I change not. My word is true. My word is bond. I said that I would never leave you nor ever forsake you, that I will be with you until the end of the world. Then that's what I said that I'm going to do. We just have to trust God and believe that he's going to do just what he has promised or said that he was going to do. We've been working on a series in Bible study talking about faith. And as I come to a quick close, I'm I reminded that the scripture says uh, that we said that we all uh, gave our definition of faith. And my definition of faith was I just need to believe God is going to do just what he said that he's going to do. I, I, I can't be confused. It, it, it may not look like it. And so that's why walking by faith and not by sight, it tells us because the things that we see may not be what we what may actually happen. It may lead us astray. It may look good, but it, I, I may not see it. And so I'm thinking, I'm looking at the snow right out the window and I'm thinking that uh, there's some black ice out there. It may look like it's black. And so I may walk out there unsuspecting, but if I consult God and seek God's faith, God will say, no son, that's a, that's a little mirage there. That's, a, that's something a little 
slippery and you may need yeah. to take a little caution. And so that's that's the choices that we make. And so when we make choices, we don't have to make the choices on our own. I'm here to declare today to you that the Bible tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he said all these things will be added. But first we have to seek God. And so we have to seek God in the morning. He said early have I risen to bless you. Early have I risen to seek your faith. And if we do that, those choices that we have to come across during our daytime will be easier to make. I make that declaration that if we seek God at the beginning of our day, the decisions that we have to make later on in the day will be easier because God will give us the things that we need to do to be successful in the day. Hallelujah. We thank God thank you. for his word. And if it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Matthew 6 and 24 tells us we can't serve two masters. You're either going to love one and hate the other. It, it can't happen. Or you're only going to give one half and the other half, but you're going to give one of them a little bit more. And we serve a jealous God today. Our God is a, a, a jealous God. He's a jealous God, and he don't want to split his time between anybody else. And our God is so awesome that he's willing uh, to not have you at all than to have just a little bit of you. The enemy, he'll, he'll be happy just having you a little bit of you. He, he's okay with splitting you in half. But our God is so awesome that he doesn't want half of us. He only wants all of us. And if he can't help all of you, he's willing to step back and allow you to do what you're going to do until you get to the point and make the choice that for God, I'm going to live and for God, I'm going to die. The choice is yours today. Yes. Whose side are you leaning on? Whose side are you going to defend? Whose, whose name are you going to make glorious? Whose name are you going to make great? Decide the choice is yours today. Whose side, who's, who, who are you going to bless? Who are you going to live for? Joshua said, if it seems evil unto you today, choose whom you're going to serve. Choose the God you're going to serve. Are you going to serve the God that left you out there alone? Are you going to serve the God that led you astray? Are you going to serve the God that, that, that did not do anything for you? Are you going to serve the God who, 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 who won't make a way out of no way? Are you going to serve the God that can't do anything for you? Or are you going to serve the God who, who brought you out of darkness into a marvelous light? Are you going to serve the God today who changed you and, and saved you and made you the person that you are today? Are you going to serve the God who always comes in and shows up right on time? Who signed are you leaning on? It's a choice that we have to make. And I'm here to remind you today that the choice is yours. Who are you going to choose today? Are you going to choose the gods on the uh, other sides of the flood, flood? The gods of our fathers? The gods of the Amorites? And whose land of you dwell? But he made a declaration. He made a conscious decision. Just like Paul did. He said, Paul said, I'm fully persuaded. But Joshua just simply said, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. There's no misunderstanding. There's no confusion. He didn't let anything come into there to, to, to put any doubt in any minds of anybody that heard him. And so when we go about our day-to-day -day tasks, there should be no doubt in our mind that it's for God I live and for God that I'm going to die. Who's Lord, whose side are you leaning on today? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. Yes, we thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for your unmerited favor. We thank you, oh God, that while we were yet in sin, you allowed your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. God, we thank you today for mercy, oh God, for love and truth, oh God, that endured through all generations, God. God, we just want to say thank you, oh God, today. We shall serve you, oh God. We don't want to serve the world, oh God, for the world does not love us like you, oh God. It was you who looked beyond our thoughts and saw our needs, God. We're here today, oh God. Yes, the choice is ours, oh God, but we choose you today. We bless your name and we, we give you all you. glory and all the honor, oh God, and all the praise. It belongs to you because you have been better to us than we have been to ourselves. So God, help the word today. We pray that it reached and accomplished the task that it set forth for it to accomplish today. We have a choice that we need to make and we need you to help us with our choice. We choose you today. We choose your ways, God. We choose your thoughts, oh God. We choose your actions. And so, God, if you bless us, hear us now. Touch us, oh God, in every facet of our lives, oh God.
that we may put you first in every area of our lives, in our relationships. God, help us to choose you first, oh God. In our friendships, God, help us to choose you first, oh God. If there's friends, oh God, that are around us, oh God, that talk bad about you, God, that means that we should not be around them, oh God. Help us to, to make better choices in our friendships today, oh God. God, on our jobs today, if, if, if our friends or if our co-workers, oh God, they don't want to serve you, God, help us to remain steadfast, oh God. Continue serving in you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, help us to make better decisions, oh God. In the name of Jesus, decisions that will exude you, oh God. The decisions, oh God, that will continue to spread our brand, oh God. That that will continue to spread the message of holiness, oh God. Help us, oh God, today to make choices, oh God, that we may be able to follow after our mission, oh God, to proclaim the good news of Jesus, to compel men to live holy and separated lives, oh God. Help us to walk after our mission, oh God, to, to grow in love, oh God, through discipleship, God. Help us to be able to exude our mission and our brand, oh God, so that we may uh, uh, present our bodies to you as living sacrifices, that nothing will separate us from our, your love, oh God. We have to make a determined decision and a determined, uh, be determined in our minds to choose you this day whom we're going to serve. And we profess in our hearts and our minds today that we shall choose you. For it's for God that we shall live and it's for God that we shall die. We, shall, we belong to you. We belong to the most high God. And so we bless your name now and we give you all the glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put our hands together and let's magnify the God of our salvation today. Hallelujah. We bless your name and we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. You may be seated as we begin to prepare ourselves for worship. We hope that we pray that what you have heard today will be a blessing to you because we know that the word, what it does, it helps us to stand in the evil day. We learned in our Sunday school today that the Bible tells us to stand, having done all that we can stand, put on the breastplate of righteousness. The word helps us to put on the breastplate of righteousness. The world, the world helps us to stand in this last and evil day. And if you don't know what day that we live in, I'm here to tell you that we live in a, 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 the last and evil days today. If you can't tell, people are doing crazy stuff today. And so the decision, the choice that we make today is going to have a lasting effect on how we live and how God moves in our lives. And I, I don't know if it's just me, but I want to be walking in the footsteps of God. Where God leads me, that's where I want to go. Where God directs me, that's where I want to find myself to be at. I don't want to find myself outside of the will of God because outside of the will of God is danger. It's death. It's destruction. But in the will of God, it may not be ex comfortable as I want it to be, but in the will of God is life and life more abundantly. So I want to remind you today, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Don't serve the gods that let you down. Don't serve those people that let you down. But choose the God who has never failed you, has never left you, nor has ever forsaken you. Amen? And so I want to encourage those that are here as you prepare your hearts to be a blessing to the house of the Lord. I also want to encourage those that are viewing us online. I'm sorry for those that did not were not able to have service today, but we pray that you were able to enjoy our service today, that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart were acceptable in God's sight and were a blessing to you. And so if you were blessed by this message and blessed by this service today, I want to encourage you today to sow into this ministry. The ministry that we have as far as our streaming ministry is not a free ministry. If it was free, then everybody would be doing it. But it's not. If there is an expense that is incurred uh, with this part of our ministry, and we want to encourage you today to sow into our ministry by clicking on the tithe button or clicking on the offering button. But whichever one you decide to choose today, know that God is going to return unto you some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. And watch God open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that you will not have room enough to receive it. So I encourage you today, press on those buttons and so into this great and awesome ministry that God has in store for us here today at Praise Center Church of God in Christ. God bless you, and now you are in the hands.